morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship and praise. This morning, as we observe the baptism of our Lord, we'll be following this order of service that is included in the bulletin. We begin then with the gathering right for holy baptism. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll sing the first verse of him, 680, rise <coughs> into your name, most holy. authority and by his authority 
I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing verse 4. <laughs> Father and to 
to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson for today is from the book of Acts, in chapter 10, beginning with verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of, a of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how we went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil because God was with us. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the verse of the day. Alleluia! You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia! Alleluia! Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The holy gospel for today is in the gospel of Matthew in chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee the Jordan, to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do, to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. <clears throat> then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 377, The Jordan River Came Our Lord. <laughs>
grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen. The word of God for our meditation this morning is the gospel lesson we heard from Matthew chapter 3. Your friends in Christ. The other day I forgot a password of one of my accounts. Kind of frustrating to keep them all straight. Used to be all you had to remember was your social security number, your address, and your phone number. Now there's so many passwords that you you need a password list to keep track of all of them. And then of course you need a password in order to access your password list. It's kind of frustrating. But identity recognition is important. And it's especially important when it comes to our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? What was he born for? Well, the epiphany season helps answer those questions. Epiphany means to reveal, to make known. And the Bible spells out for us Jesus' identity and his purpose at the very beginning of his public ministry when he was baptized. It's there that, that we recognize Jesus' identity, his, his purpose. And as we do, we also recognize our own. Now Jesus, baptism is one of the, the key proofs of the doctrine of the Holy Trinity we have in the Bible. I mean, there at the Jordan River, we see Jesus... <coughs> The Son of God standing in the water. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. God the Father whose voice booms down from heaven. For John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit coming in the form of a dove was an important proof of Jesus' identity for him. He said, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. For John, Jesus' baptism was proof that Jesus' identity had truly been revealed. But the Holy Spirit coming down on Jesus like a dove, the voice of the Father, this is my Son, also identified Jesus as the promised Savior, the Messiah. The one the Old Testament prophets foretold. John the Baptist was, we could say, the, the last of the Old Testament prophets. He never got to see the complete fulfillment of Jesus' redeeming work. John died in prison when King Herod had his head chopped off. But knowing Jesus' identity enabled John to point to Jesus and, and proclaim him to others. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist knew that Jesus did not come to this earth just to, to set a good example for us, to show us how to live 
so that we could earn our own salvation. No, John knew that Jesus came as the sacrificial lamb whose death on the cross would pay for all of our sins and gain for us a place in heaven. Now by faith, we also recognize Jesus' identity. He is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who came to take away our sin, to cancel hell's sentence over us. By faith, we also then recognize our own identity. That because of Jesus, we are now children of God sons and daughters of the Father. The Apostle John declared this in his first letter when he said, How great is the love of the Father that he's lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. There are many people in this world who go through life never really understanding their identity. They spend their lives trying to figure out who they are. What are they supposed to do with their lives? How blessed we are that by faith in Jesus, Jesus' identity has revealed for us that He's the Son of God, He's our Savior, and that because of Him, we are children of God. Now, the beginning of our text, we hear that Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to, de to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? It seemed backwards to John the Baptist I mean, John had spoken of the Savior's great authority. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And yet when Jesus appeared, he appeared as a humble lowly man. He allowed himself to be tempted, tested by the devil. When he was calling his disciples and Nathaniel heard that Jesus was from Nazareth, he said, Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And Jesus did not rebuke Nathaniel but simply invited him to follow. And to think of the, the shameful way Jesus' own people treated him throughout his life and in his death. Certainly not recognizing the power, the authority that belonged to Jesus. But that's why it was important for John the Baptist to witness what he did. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out, out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God <coughs> descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son. This humble, lowly-looking man was the Son of God. It was like the angel told Jesus, or told Joseph, before Jesus was born, that this child would be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Later, when John was thrown in prison by Herod, and started to have some of his own doubts, he sent some of his followers to Jesus to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, 
Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Jesus' miracles. His message revealed that he indeed was the Son of God, possessing all divine power and authority. In fact, Jesus himself referred to his baptism and, and the testimony of the Father on more than one occasion when he was questioned about his authority. He told the Jews, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. But there's another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. The Father who has sent me has himself testified concerning me. Today, God's word and authority are still being questioned and doubted. There are those who say, who's to say that this world was not created by evolution? Who's to say that homosexuality is wrong Who's to say that we should not practice fellowship with those who persist in, in false teaching? Who's to say that Jesus is the only way to be saved? Well, God says so. He says so in his word. That's all the authority that we need. Jesus' epiphany reveals to us his authority as the Son of God. And when John tried to stop Jesus from being baptized by him, he said, I need to be baptized by you. And you come to me? John was right. John was a, a sinful man who needed baptism's cleansing of sin. <coughs> In fact, even when Jesus was on trial before the Jews and Pontius Pilate, nobody could find him guilty of, of any crime, of any sin. In fact, those who witnessed Jesus' life as earthly ministry testified he's done everything well. The Father's testimony at his baptism this is my son whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. Tells us the same thing. So why did Jesus then persist and prevail on John <coughs> to be baptized if he didn't need it? Well, Jesus said, let it be so. <coughs> it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus was not baptized for himself. He was baptized for us. His whole, that sinless, perfect, obedient life was lived for us. God's law demands perfection and condemns those who don't measure up. And so Jesus lived a, a holy, perfect life for us. He measured up to God's law perfectly for us in our place. And now through faith, <coughs> Jesus' holiness, his righteousness, is credited, given to us. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's why Jeremiah, in prophesying the coming of the Savior, said, this is the name by which you will be called the Lord our righteousness. His parents or grandparents, we know the excitement, the pleasure of when 
the children or grandchildren bring to us a piece of art. And we receive it with joy and excitement. Even though the coloring is outside the lines, and maybe the paint is smeared, and maybe the dog looks more like a horse. We receive that picture gladly, with joy, with pride we put it up on the refrigerator. Well, that's the way that God looks at us. Because of Jesus, he looks at us, even though none of us are perfect or righteous. In fact, the, the devil would like us to beat ourselves up over our sin. And yet, doing that is not just a waste of time. It's not the right thing to do. Because Jesus has paid for our sins. Because of Jesus, the Father looks at us and also says, <clears throat> with him or her, I am well pleased. Because Jesus has taken away our sins. Because his righteousness and holiness is now ours. That's the difference that Jesus' epiphany takes for us. In him, we see his identity, his authority, his holiness. And we see ours, too. Amen. <coughs> and may he who has begun his good work in us, Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen. Now we're we'll joining, confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. O oh, merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings of baptism by which you offer and grant us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptism as the robe of righteousness that we are to wear all the days of our life. And look with special favor on us and grant us a rich measure of your Holy Spirit that we may grow in faith and godly living. Make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized, so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.
congregation may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 379, Christ, your presence through the desert.
morning again. Good to see all of you here this morning and to be able to share God's word with you today. Uh, a few announcements and reminders. Uh, the uh, 2023 offering envelopes are in the mailboxes. If you haven't picked yours up yet, uh, please be sure to do so. Uh, the annual meeting of our congregation will be on Sunday, January 22nd at uh, 10.30. Our uh, Monday morning Bible study will be tomorrow morning uh, at uh, 9.30. <coughs> Wish you all the Lord's blessing through this time. 